Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiters here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with bilateral, really wet, sticky, loose earwax, and it was causing the ears to stick every morning. So upon waking, the patient felt that the ear was completely blocked, and that's because this wax, the consistency, is almost gluing the side ear canal walls together. And after a couple of hours in the morning, they felt a bit of relief because, of course, um, during the course of moving your jaw when you're talking or eating, your jaw will move enough um, for some of the wax to um, unstick itself from the canal walls. And it may create a little sound path for sound to travel through towards the eardrum. But it was getting to the stage now where that was no longer happening for the patient and they were experiencing their symptoms for most part of the day. Um, they had used some drops themselves prior to attending to try to remove um, this wax, but there was just simply too much wax in there. And in, they actually felt that it, the use of the drops exacerbated their symptoms. So quite often, if you've got a lot of wax in your ear already, when you instill drops in there, the wax absorbs the drops and it expands and swells and creates more of a blockage. Um, uh, paradoxically, when someone does come with earwax that's really, really soft and wet after using drops if you actually put some drops in during the procedure it helps to bind that wax together temporarily and as you can see it really helped me to remove this it binded the wax it um, made it into a singular plug and i was able to remove the majority in one single piece i'm just mopping up now all this wax and skin that i'm removing it's non-significant in terms of the patient's ability to hear but i'm just going to hover over Anything that comes away uh, without much difficulty, uh, I'm happy to remove. But uh, as I said, it's not really going to improve their symptoms per se. The last thing we want to do now is make contact with the canal wall and potentially cause a bit of trauma or uh, microabrasion or a bit of discomfort for the patient. So you can see there's a bit of peripheral wax, surface wax coating the canal wall, which is fine. It's, it's actually, we, we want our ears to have some wax. Uh, without any wax in your ears, you're more likely to get dryness, um, cracking up the skin because the wax helps to hydrate the skin. It sits on the surface of the skin that lines the ear canal. It repels external water, so it's, it, um, it's a waterproof barrier, and it prevents moisture within the skin cells that it sits on from rising to the surface and uh, evaporating. So. In addition, earwax is slightly acidic, so the acidity is believed to help inhibit bacterial fungal growth. It can help. Also, the acidity is believed to act as a natural insect repellent. And wax is greasy and sticky, uh, especially this patient's wax. So any foreign bodies, particles that enter the ear, they get stuck to the wax. And in about 90 to 95% of the population, the wax makes its own way out of the ear. So the skin that lines the ear canal... As it dies and sheds, it moves sideways like a conveyor belt out of the ear and any wax sitting on the surface of the skin is also transported out of the ear, free of charge. So now that last piece of wax I just removed there, it revealed the eardrum. So at this stage already, the patient could hear significantly better, but there's still quite a lot of wax on the anterior canal walls of the front section. So I'm just going to separate this and you can see the wax is sitting on a dead layer of skin so it would appear that this patient's natural conveyor belt that skin that should naturally come away it's not as efficient and as such the wax sitting on the surface is still remaining in the ear i think i'm gonna revert to a fine end suction probe this patient's ear canal is a bit longer than the, the average the average ear canal length from the entrance to the eardrum is approximately 26 millimeters but in this case i think it's probably just a tad more and you get you get a feel of it with the endoscope when you put an endoscope in the ear it gives you a good perception about the length of one's ear canal probably more so than a microscope because i'm using um, a microscope in clinic um, with the development of the wax scope and I actually feel the endoscope, for me personally, provides me with more depth perception. It's just because it gives you a wider field of view. 
now. So again, it's just some soft wax around the edge. I'm just hovering over it. it comes away brilliant. If not, I'm not going to risk uh, causing trauma to that part of the ear canal to retrieve some insignificant wax. If it came away, fantastic. If not, then let it be. But I think I probably may just hover over once more. We shall see. I think I'll just change the angle of the tip. I'm just going to hover over. I think at that stage, I just felt it wasn't going to come away without having to physically make contact with the canal wall, which wasn't worth it. Now, this is on the cartilaginous portion. This is on the outer third of the ear canal. It's still going to be um, gentle. But here, we can apply a bit more pressure. And I'm just hovering over. I just want to make sure there's nothing underneath. Now, there's a bit of skin there to the right. I just obviously want to make sure there's no risk of a, a canal cholesteratoma when you've got some debris like this. Um, canal cholesterol is extremely rare, but they can sometimes be con concealed behind some wax or skin on the surface. So wherever possible, I do just hover over. Typically, it on the bony part of the canal, so this is a cartilaginous portion, so less likely. But they just have got some skin to the entrance to the right, but it was fine on a close examination. It's just a bit... Uh, uh, macerated skins of the drops well i hope you enjoyed that video guys take care keep well and speak soon bye